SCCM prerequisites are very important for us to complete for SCCM installation because we would not be able to proceed further to install our SCCM during installation. So in this video, we will be installing final prerequisites. Check out other videos of this series by clicking the I button on the top right hand corner if you have not checked out yet. This is Jay, welcome to my channel Technext Solutions. Let's get started. So I will be working from SCCM server. I am in server manager at the moment. Uh, under local server, you can see the computer name technext-sco1 and um, it could be a different server name in your case. So internet connectivity is optional. I'll show you a solution. Otherwise, you will get an error while installing one of the features. If I ping 8.8.8.8, .8 I will be getting response here. So I have functional internet connectivity. So these features can be installed in a one go and uh, but I have broken it into parts to understand it better and also to make it look easy. In server manager of your SCCM server, if you click on dashboard and then click on add roles and features and then click next and next under server selection, I have only one available which is technext seo one Click next. In server roles, we will be adding web server. Okay, so click on add features as well and um, I will click on next features. I uh, will come back to features later. Click next and click next. In role services, uh, we will be clicking on um, custom logging, logging tools, ODBC logging, request monitor. And if you scroll down under management tools, IAS com management compatibility, extend that and we will be checking all the options under IAS 6 management compatibility. Add features and that's about it. So click on next and restart. I'm pretty sure it's not going to restart and then click on install. I will be back once this is done. Okay, so this is done. I will click on close. Now again, let's click on add roles and features. And um, so I will click on next, server selection, server roles. Uh, we are not selecting anything here. We will be selecting under features. Okay, so 3.5 features, click on that and we are selecting everything. Add and non HTTP activation as well. And uh, .NET 4.6 under WCF HTTP activation and that's about it okay and we also click on um, bits background intelligent transfer services we will be adding that as well so just double check underneath here IAS server extension is very important okay so that's done and other thing we will be adding is uh, remote differential compression so remote differential compression is here. Click on that and that's about it. So we'll click on next and uh, restart if it requires. And also this is the part where you need internet connectivity. Okay. So if you do not have internet connectivity, you will see an error. I'll show you uh, what the error is going to look like. So this is a different server I have and I do not have, as you can see at the bottom here, I do not have internet connectivity and I tried to install uh, .NET Framework 3.5 and it gave me an error. So you can see this error here. So I'll just click on close. If you do not have internet connectivity, what you can do is click on add roles and features. Um, server selection is your server, whatever your server is. Click next and we'll go to features and uh, we will select uh, .NET 3.5 whatever we need and then click next and here before you click on install click on specify and alternate source path okay and make sure you have your ISO file of your Windows Server 2016 so we can have a look at that as well so if I go to file settings and uh, under DVD drive I have connected Windows Server 2016 ISO file okay so I'll close this and you can see this uh, DVD drive here, which is Windows Server 2016 ISO file. So what I will do is I'll click on specify an alternate source path. And then I'll go to my ISO file, which is here. And I'll click on sources. In sources, I will 
click on SXS and in here you can see Microsoft Windows Net FX3. Okay, so this is the file it will use. So copy the path, right click copy and then just paste your path here. Okay, and then click on OK. Alright, once you do that and then click on install. I'll show you it's gonna work. Okay, here you can see that that feature is successfully installed. So let's go back to our actual uh, technex-sco1. So if you do not have internet connectivity, you, ha you can do that, specify an, an alternate source path. And uh, I have internet connectivity, I can just click on install and it is going to download that file from internet and then it's going to use this file for the installation. So I'm going to click on install. I will be back once this is done. Alright, uh, so this time it took slightly longer as compared to when you have uh, uh, source files ready. It's because it downloaded the file from internet in my case. So this is done and I will just click on close. And the last thing we are going to add is a WSR server. So click on add roles and features again. And then uh, directly you can go to the server selection which is uh, SEO1 uh, on Technics. And then uh, server roles uh, will, would be Windows Server and Update Services, click on that, add features, uh, click next and we don't have to add any other features, click next. Um, in WSUS, then uh, keep going, click on uh, next. So uncheck WID connectivity and uh, check SQL Server connectivity and then click on next. So with the content you can create a new folder in um, C Drive and you can just name it WSUS content. Uh, I'm going to open File Explorer and then in local disk C, I will create a new folder. I will name it uh, WSUS content and I will copy the path. And I'll go back and I'll paste the path here. Okay, and then click next. So d database instance, because we have installed SQL Server on the same um, server. So I have to just name the server. So SQL Server is installed on technex-scu1 and uh, we kept the uh, name of our instance default. So if you have changed the name, you can type in the name. Okay, it will be your name, the instance name that you have picked. So in my case, I just kept it default. If I click on check connection, it's successfully connected to the server. Okay, so just click next and it's just a confirmation I will restart the server if it needs to but it's not going to restart so click on install okay so WSR server is installed as well and I will just close this and uh, we have this yellow triangle if you click on that and uh, we will have post deployment okay so that's for Windows Server update services click on launch post installation tasks so we're not gonna fully configure it and we're going to configure it partially and then rest I will, will leave it for uh, SCCM. So it will take a while once you click on uh, post deployment configuration. So give it some time and I will be back once it's ready for the configuration. Okay, so it came up with a message saying uh, installation succeeded. So click on your Windows logo on your Windows server and then we'll go to administrative tools. Click on that and then we will open Windows Server update services from here okay so click on yes you will see this window so it is just giving you a few things uh, before you begin so just click next for Microsoft update if you like to join Microsoft update improvement program you can tick yes or no so our case it's just test environment it doesn't really matter I'm gonna untick this and uh, click next so upstream server if you have any other WSUS server so we don't have any other WSUS server we're gonna directly connect with Microsoft update click on that and then click next so proxy server if you have any you can mention that your proxy server I don't have any so I'll click next and that's about it I'm gonna click on cancel okay the rest will leave it for SCCM so click on cancel yes and then that's it this part is done so with IAS server uh, one small change we are going to do is because by default IAS server it actually blocks some of the file extensions okay so we are going to add .msi file extension in the allow list in your server manager click on IAS and then right click and then click uh, internet information services manager so that's IAS manager 
and in here so select your server click on your server and in futures view you will see request filtering okay so here's the request filtering double click on that and on the right hand pane you will see allow file name extension click on that and just type dot msi and then click ok alright so this is added to the allow list so you can check the allow list as well so if you click on allow so we we'll go to dot msi you can see it's true it's allowed okay so that's about it so this is done and in the next video we are going to install actual SCCM server so we have done all the prerequisites give this video a thumbs up if you feel like it was informative for you and also subscribe to my channel if you have not done yet any questions leave in the comments see you in the next video